Hey there, welcome back to the Happy Homestead. I am Amanda and it is the end of July. In fact, the day that I'm filming this is only one day prior than this is gonna air. It's Friday, July 29th. This is gonna air on July 30th. And then we go into August 1st on Sunday. And the month of August is an exciting month when it comes to the homesteading and the preserving of the food because Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead, I think it was about three or four years ago, she created this challenge. And I think it was just a really a self-imposed challenge that she kept herself accountable with through social media and whatnot. And it's called the Every Bit Counts Challenge. And there is a hashtag for that. And you're gonna to wanna to follow that hashtag on both YouTube and on Instagram because there's a lot of homesteaders that do this every year. And it runs from August 1st to August 31st, right? There's 30, 31 days in August. No, there is, yes. <laughs> Got confused for a second. So it runs for the entire month of August. I did this last year for the first time and found it exhausting and exhilarating because it kept my brain thinking about something new each day to preserve. Now, there's really no rules to this challenge. You make your own rules. All you gotta do is put something away that works for you and your family. Now that could mean you freeze it, you can it, you dehydrate it, maybe you freeze dry it if you have a freeze dryer, uh, pickle it, ferment it, right? Those are all preserving of food ways as well. So there's a variety of things you can do. And it doesn't have to be food. It can be herbs, it could be medicinal herbs, it could be things that you're growing, it could be things you're foraging, it could be things that you're buying at the grocery store or at your farmer's market. Maybe you find bananas, right? Like bananas that are kind of <laughs> teetering on the edge of being appealing for really cheap at your store. Well, buy them and then cut them up and freeze them for smoothies later on or for banana bread this winter, or maybe you slice them and dehydrate them into banana chips, right? Think about how you can preserve the bounty. So that's what I wanted to talk about today while I make some meatballs. I have a lot of our bounty here behind me and I have a lot of work to do just to get everything put away, but that's what the month of August is for. And so I am going to be participating in the Every Bit Counts Challenge. I'll be posting on Instagram everything that I'm doing daily, but I will also be videoing it and probably putting out, I'm thinking, two videos a week. So that way it's not one video of seven days, um, but splitting it up across two videos a week and helping to give you more inspiration quicker rather than you having to wait. And so. Today I'm going to make some meatballs. Now, no worry, are not officially in the challenge yet, but in the spirit of the challenge, I am going to do something to help make more room in our freezer. I have five pounds of meat here. I have two pounds of ground venison from a deer that my husband got last fall. I have, I think it's two pounds. Here, I'll just start putting it in here two pounds of ground pork as well from the pig that we purchased locally last year. And I have one pound of ground lamb. And so I am literally making just this hodgepodge of different meats for some meatballs. And I've got my herbs and spices here. I've got some breadcrumbs, some milk, some Parmesan cheese, and some eggs. And I am making a huge batch. I'm gonna mix it all together and then portion it out into individual meatballs. And I'm going to bake them and freeze them. So that on these busy weeknights, right, now that school is back in session for my children, uh, my husband, the fall is the busiest time of year for him with his job. Um, and then with school sports, or sports starting rather, our kids are doing some fall sports. I need some really easy dinners to kind of just pull from when I need it. And so I've got my meat here. I'm going to go wash my hands and put some gloves on and then just start mixing it together. I actually think I'm going to put everything in and then mix it all at once. So I'll start with cracking my eggs here. But so I really wanted to do this for, you know, the first reason, like I just said, as far as having some easy weeknight meals that I can just pull some meatballs out. 
either for spaghetti and meatballs or maybe a meatball sandwich, right? Like a meatball sub or maybe just plain old meatballs with nothing else um, except some sauce and veggies. The other reason I wanted to do this is because we've got to make some room in the freezer. Now, mind you, these will be going back in the freezer, but I still find that trade-off a lot better because it's a ready-to-heat-and-eat food because these are going to be cooked. Um, and that is because we are getting another pig in the next one to two weeks. And I only had... I think I have one pound of ground pork left from last year, so which is great, right? We went through it in about a year. Uh, and so I really wanted to make room for the new pork, right, and use up last year's. Okay, so all I added, by the way, I have five pounds of beef. This is not a tried and true recipe. I am literally just throwing stuff in. But I did uh, five pounds of meat and three eggs so far. I added some Parmesan cheese. Now I'm adding some dried minced onion. I also have some garlic powder. It can never go wrong with garlic powder. <laughs> in my brain, in my mind. Some dehydrated oregano, just dried oregano. And you can do this with all beef if you have ground beef and that's what you prefer. And I'm just doing the different types of meat because honestly, I actually think it's going to taste really good, but also to use up those little last pieces of the pork and even the lamb. This is dried basil, pepper, and Redmond real salt. As you know, that's the only salt we have in this house, and I love it. Probably about three teaspoons, three to four teaspoons. Okay, milk. This milk is not bad, but it's a little cultured, so it's perfect for the meatballs. Maybe half a cup. And then I've got some fresh sourdough breadcrumbs from batches of bread I've made that, you know, either the ends we just weren't eating it or um, maybe it didn't look pretty and then I just made it into breadcrumbs. So I'm probably gonna add about a cup of breadcrumbs. Now, everyone loves those moist, fluffy meatballs, right? Who doesn't? And so people often ask like, how do I do that? How do I make them moist? By the way, I hate that word. I've said it twice now. I can't remember if I've talked about that before or not, but the word moist is like, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I've always been like that. All right. Okay. So anyway, the answer to that is to put moisture, and I don't have a problem with that word for some reason, <laughs> but put the moisture in your meatballs. That is how you keep them juicy and not dry. All right, so I'm going to start mixing everything up. Now, you have two options, right, of how you do your meatballs as far as cooking them, because you do want to cook them. I would not ball these up and then put them in the freezer. I really would cook them first and then freeze them, so you're just heating them through when it's time to pull them out and use them on those hectic, busy days. But your options are pan, fry on your stove or on your range, uh, which I think is probably how a lot of us are used to doing it. And it does add that gorgeous and delicious browned flavor, right? But the other thing you can do, which is what I'm gonna do today, is actually put them on a parchment lined baking sheet and bake them until they're fully cooked through. A um, couple of reasons for that, and mainly it's because of the volume of meatballs I have. I am not standing over the stove pan frying all of these meatballs. I will bake them in as many batches as I need to in the stove, or in the oven rather, so that they get done faster. And also, 
I just don't want all of the extra fat maybe right now from pan frying them. Okay, I just turned the oven on to 375. And I am making decent sized meatballs. I'm gonna say between one and a half to two inches in diameter. We just really like, you know, some substantial meatballs. And as that came out of my mouth, I realized how funny that sounded. <laughs> If you are giggling at home, I understand. Our little preteen selves get it. But you could definitely roll these into some smaller meatballs. Um, mix it up a little bit. Just keep in mind that whatever size you do, you wanna be aware of you know, having them cooked through but not overcooked. So anyway, this is the kind of thing that you would do in the Every Bit Counts Challenge. It's all about putting something away. Now maybe you wanna do something like a freezer meal, right? You wanna make casserole, you're having a casserole dinner one night or a meatloaf. Well, go ahead and make two or make three and freeze the other ones for later use. That's all about, you know, helping your future self and getting something put away to use during the winter. And then what happens, right? We go through this challenge in August and then come January 1st, if you have been following along with me, you may remember that I did the Three Rivers Challenge in January and I absolutely intend to do it again this coming January. And the purpose of that challenge is then to enjoy everything you've put up, right? And you make your own rules, right? Maybe you don't go to the grocery store in a week, or you go two times a month or three times a month, or maybe you normally spend $300 a week on groceries and you're only gonna spend 150 a week on groceries. Like you make your own rules, but the whole point is to utilize all of this wonderful food that you have already put up. And so last year I did it, I think I've done it two years now, and every month in January, I actually don't have to spend any money on food. And it's been so liberating, it really has. All of the work that we do during the garden season pays off. Fifty-six meatballs are done. Let me show you what they look like. I, got, I had four trays. I just consolidated a lot of them onto this one. Um, but you can see how they're beautifully browned. They are cooked through and I can tell that they are so not dry. Now again, we're going to have some for dinner tonight. So before I post this video, right, because I'm posting it tomorrow, I'll put in the notes section if I need to change anything up from the recipe. But I think as long as you add some eggs, some milk, some cheese, and breadcrumbs, you're going to have this really juicy, delicious meatball. And again, breadcrumbs, people think that's really counterproductive to having a meatball rich in moisture, but it's not because the breadcrumb actually soaks up some of the other stuff, whether it be the milk, the egg, the cheese, or the fat from the meat. And that's what helps create that beautifully delicious kind of, <laughs> dare I say fluffy, I don't know if I used fluffy before, fluffy kind of meatball that you want to bite into. So 56 of them, I don't know how many, my husband's not home tonight for dinner, so it's just me and the kids, so maybe three meatballs each. Um, I'll just estimate 10, right? So 10 will go for dinner tonight, but then we'll have 46 left to go in the freezer. Now, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're not subscribed because you're going to see all of the things that I'm going to be preserving 
every day, at least two times a week filming for the month of August. And on Instagram, follow me on Instagram, it's the Happy Homestead NC, as well as follow the hashtag every bit counts challenge because you'll get to see what all other homesteaders, gardeners, and other folks are doing to help add to their food storage. It's actually really inspiring. It's really exciting to see all of the different creative things that people are doing. So I will see you soon. So the next video you see will most likely be the first couple of days of the challenge. Again, I'm gonna film every day and then I'll post probably twice a week to keep you updated. Stay healthy, stay well. Bye-bye.